Hey everybody, it's Gordon. Welcome to the bench. Tonight we have a Stanley six of five and a half. Tote needs a lot of attention and a knob. It's a set, so we're gonna handle it like a set. Stick with me, I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so today we're gonna work on a Bedrock 605 set. And because this belongs to one person and I wanna keep them together, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this all at one time. So I usually separate my round work and knob work from totes and freeform surfaces. But uh, again, I wanna get this one rolling, keep it all together and get it back to our super patient customer. So let's start with that knob. You know what we're gonna do here? It's solid, although it's really chewed up. Um, not going to worry about that too much. We have some material to replace and I'm going to do this in several steps. So it will be good to get that started right away. And we're going to glue it to uh, an MDF sled and make a table saw pass to get a nice flat surface. Then we'll glue rosewood on vertical grain with tinted epoxy and we'll let that set. And then we'll rotate it. We'll do another table saw cut and we'll rotate it, do another table saw cut. So I'm going to do that probably three times on this one. We'll use the same material all the way around, shape it with a rasp, mount it on the lathe, dial it in for center, turn it back to its original shape. We'll deal with this check, and then we'll see about all this other stuff going on up here. The chewy chew chew marks um, might be best left um, to give it that authentic aged look, and really let's not erase the history here, but repair the overall geometry and call it good. So that one's gonna get going. I'll throw a couple shots in as we go. Then, the hard part. Um, we've got some issues here. You know that I'm a one step at a time person, so uh, let's break it down. First of all, the counter bore doesn't seem to exist. That just looks like a big old crater right in the top of this. Someone's drilled it out way too deep. So we'll put a plug in and then recenter it um, to recreate the counter bore, which is so important for the barrel nut. In fact, if I grabbed one, I bet it would just disappear. And there you have it. So we can't have that. So we, we've got to restore um, this counter bore. We'll do that. Problem number one. Problem number two is the brake. It's covered in some kind of adhesive, um, which looks to be epoxy like but i don't know what it is we'll try and remove that chemically um, and clean up that surface so not too afraid of that however as i put this together i see that we're missing a big chunk of material in the center right here in the front we've plugged these before not too afraid of that um, and then we come around to the other side and on the right hand side we're just flat out missing material so um, we'll talk about that and evaluate it, um, but we're going to have to graph something in here and we've got some arcuate grain going on. So it would be nice to kind of continue that. Maybe we'll cut a disc, um, football shaped and put that in so that the grain kind of follows along. Okay. But we're still not out of the woods with this one. As you can see, the entire foot is split right down the middle and the toe has been altered somehow so that's not right it's not as I'm looking at it, it's not even correct for um, this style so now I'm starting to question whether or not this even belongs on the 605 uh, what are we gonna do let's take a vote all in favor of moving forward raise your hand we will have to talk to somebody about this and it looks like they've tried to epoxy it to the plane also, which kind of tells me this wasn't supposed to be there. So let's do this. Okay, time out for a second. This is kind of funny. It's not funny, but it's, it's worth stopping and talking about. So I knew that I had a Bedrock 605 and a half set, and I started the video full intentions of doing the restoration. But as I was filming that segment just a second ago, I'm looking at the toe and the way this hole is drilled in the split, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, that's, that's not right. That doesn't make any sense. And I recognized a feature on the bottom of this tote, too, that also wouldn't be there. So 
The bad news is this is not an original rosewood tote from a 605 and a half. So in talking with the owner, um, we're gonna do something different, but the video itself, I think serves a good purpose. And that is maybe we can talk about the mounting technique and adaptations like this. And I'll, I'll tell you what I was thinking. Let's take a closer look because I brought my five and a quarter out to help us with this little bit of detective work. So let's take a closer look. For a tote repair like this, one of the things that I do is I use broken hand planes where I've cut the mounting surface out and then I uh, attach it using the, the correct hardware. So I'll run the threaded rod through and I'll put the screw up in the toe. And in this case, that's what I was thinking because I saw the, the two holes and uh, when I went to mount this on the fixture, which looks a lot like this, there's one in process, um, I realized that, okay, this isn't right. And there was my first clue. So you're told the hole would not be this close to the toe. And the fact that they drilled this out at the toe is also the reason for this split that's going through there. But there's our first problem. Second, as you roll this over, there's adhesive on the bottom of this. And normally we don't do that. So somebody's clearly having trouble making this handle stick to their hand plane and they've put some kind of epoxy or uh, I don't know what it is on there, but there's epoxy on there. And then last, there's a dimple mark right here. And if you're not familiar with that, you would know, uh, you should know that uh, a hand plane tote like this that has the one threaded rod through it has to still keep its orientation. It wants to stay forward. So in the casting of the plane, there is a, a dimple in it, or whatever you want to call it, it sticks up right there. And that matches this little feature on the bottom. So the evidence is all there that this is really not uh, what the customer thought it was. And so we're just going to take a different path. But I didn't want to scrap the video. I thought I'd share that with you. And uh, hopefully we all learned something from that. Stick around. I appreciate you guys watching. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.